Well, hey everyone, my name is Jim Fister. Uh, I am a contractor at The Decision Place and I am an independent contractor for SNEA working on their enabling programs for persistent memory. With me is Arthur Sinio. Say hi, Arthur. Jim, hi everybody. And Dave Eggleston from uh, Intuitive Cognition. And Dave Eggleston from Intuitive Cognition Consulting. Uh, say How's that, Jim. Yeah, say that fast, everyone, three times. Hey, we're here because we're uh, providing an intro video for the Persistent Memory and Computational Storage Summit. We want to give you the basics of persistent memory and give you some idea of what's going on. And then this way we can save everybody three or four slides in their presentations and they can get to the meat of their material. So we would like to give you some basics on persistent memory. And the first thing is we should talk about uh, who SNEA is and the Compute Memory Storage Initiative. So the Compute Memory Storage Initiative is where uh, we bring all these technologies together. We drive a significant amount of techn technical work around architecture and programming specifications for computational storage for persistent memory, as well as architecture and application specifications for SSD form factors, persistent memory, and SSD performance. We work jointly with several other uh, open source alliances, and we drive outreach and evangelization for all these activities. So we're, we're uniquely positioned to be able to deliver some value around persistent memory, and that's why we would like to have a conversation with you today. So the first thing is, why don't we talk about what persistent memory is? Arthur, I'll hand it to you. So what do you think persistent memory is, and how do you view the marketplace? Hi, Jim, uh, and hi, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, we like using this pyramid, and it's been shown many times in many presentations. It's a good depiction of where non-volatile memory sits in the storage hierarchy pyramid, as you can see here. So persistent memory, first of all, is non-volatile. So if you lose power, you're going to not lose your data. And it has low latency, very comparable to DRAM, and it is byte addressable. So having Having persistent memory in the, in the storage hierarchy tier gives you fast access for system acceleration, as you can see there in that uh, store, storage pyramid. Compared to DRAM and compared to SSDs, uh, moving down the pyramid, uh, uh, slower access speeds, however, larger memory sizes. So in general, uh, persistent memory starts in the tens of, tens of uh, gigabytes and goes up from there and provides that gap that's been in that pyramid. Uh, Dave, did you want to add anything else here? Sure. Let's talk about the two main memory technologies we have. Sitting right outside the CPU, you have DRAM, and DRAM has been around for a long time and is going to continue to be around for a long time. It's not uh, non-volatile, so it is a volatile memory. It does lose its data. Then at the other extreme, just above the hard disk drive, we use NAND flash, and NAND flash is a non-volatile memory. NAND flash is quite a lot slower than DRAM but it does retain that data. And what uh, the system makers have noted for quite a while is there's this big gap between DRAM speed, which they like, and then also NAND speed, which is quite a lot slower. There's one other difference too, is that with DRAM, we keep it in what's called the cache coherent network of the processor. What does that mean? The processor inside it has a lot of caches and those are called the L1, L2, sometimes L3 cache. And what happens is the DRAM outside is seen seamlessly in the address space. What we're talking about for persistent memory is not only bringing non-volatility closer to the CPU at faster speed, but also bringing it inside that cache coherent network. And that's a big thing and a big change. Now, in terms of NAND flash, it's not fast enough to do that job. You see some of the human observable times over to the right hand side. So we need different technologies. And we're going to talk about that on the next slide. There's two different ways of doing that. One is combining different memory technologies or inventing a brand new type of memory technology that's faster than NAND, but non-volatile, unlike DRAM. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to bring up a couple other things that this slide probably brings up. Uh, so, uh, Arthur, maybe the first thing is uh, one of the uh, pyramid pieces that we see on here is NVDIMM-P, which is a relatively recent spec, and I know that you've been pretty heavily involved with that. So why don't you tell us about the current status 
first quarter, second quarter of 2021 of NVDMP. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, the NVDMP specification was published in the at the end of um, 2020 here and uh, by JEDEC. So NVDMP uh, provides a way for uh, uh, media agnostic uh, mem non-volatile memory to be put behind the buffer on the NVDIM so that allows different solutions to be adopted and be non-volatile. And it's just another industry standard way to fill that gap in that, in that pyramid. Mm -hmm. Dave, what do you think NVDMP is going to do for the marketplace as it, uh, as it drives more standard, uh, more standardization around persistence in the uh, server systems? Right. And I think standardization is the key here. The SNEA is involved in standard standardization. NVDMP, uh, as mentioned, comes out of JEDEC. I think NVDMP has to prove its place. I think the NVDMN, which was invented several years ago, is still kind of a niche market. And so if we're going to see persistent memory grow, we have to see something that fills that gap grow. NVDMP is one idea about how to do that. There's another new standard which has come out, which is called CXL, which is quite different. It doesn't attach on the DDR bus like these NVDIM, N NVDIMs do, but provides a side channel which allows for memory expansion. So I think we're going to see one of these uh, one of these standards really get momentum behind it and fill that gap for persistent memory. I think we've got good opportunity for both of them. And, you know, as you were talking about CXL, the CXL 2.0 standard was recently approved. And uh, if you look at the Persistent Memory Summit videos uh, for the 2021 summit uh, that's coming up, uh, you will see a couple of really interesting courses on persistent, mem on persistent memory on CXL. And so I think you're going to be, we will all be hearing uh, quite a lot more about CXL and where that's going. But I think there is room for both of those standards, both a DIM standard as well as a cache coherent, uh, you know, bus standard that I think is really going to revolutionize the industry. And it's great to be uh, really delivering in this time. Now, we've been talking about persistent memory overall. I think there's, you know, persistent memory is not a single thing. There's actually a variety of different persistence uh, opportunities that are out there. Arthur, why don't you talk a little bit about some of the things that you see in the market? So uh, thanks again, Jim. Yeah, the NVDIM-N, as, as we've talked about, is taking off the shelf DRAM and flash and, and allowing that uh, non-volatile access at very high DRAM speeds for that system acceleration. So that's been a, a proven solution in the market. Others in the industry that are shown here, MRAM, FRAM, uh, phase change, the 3D8 cross point, so forth, provide different areas of solution. MRAM in particular is kind of in the industrial space. It's a sm smaller densities. And uh, yeah, they all have their different place in the market, I believe. And we'll see you know, others emerging in the next few years here. Dave, did you want to add a few other points here? Sure. I think if you look at all of these technologies, what are they trying to do? They're trying to give you that speed, trying to get closer and closer to DRAM-like speed. A couple of these technologies, like Arthur talked about, is NVDIM-N, where you're combining the two major technologies in order to give you that DRAM speed. MRAM also has speed, which is pretty close to DRAM. Uh, the problem with MRAM to historically has been the cell size, bit cell size, pretty large. So it tends to be a rather expensive solution for the capacity, but good solution for industrial market, as Arthur pointed out. Um, also becoming more prevalent in the foundries as an embedded memory. When we look at PCM, the most notable example of a PCM technology is something like 3D Crosspoint, which is a very specialized version of, of PCM. This has been made, uh, come to market through Optane by Intel, and we still have to see that market grow. We're going to hear a lot of talk about that at the PM Summit, and that's been, uh, it's been a growth area, a bit of a bumpy road, and it is one of the technologies that can fill that space. On the bottom two, the other one I'd point out is the ferroelectric RAM, which was uh, actually a very old technology, but brought to life here just a few years ago in the research stage using uh, special oxides like hafnia oxide and depositing it in a way that gives you a ferroelectric effect. I think this technology is very promising. It's probably more than five years away from production, so quite a ways to go. But these are the kind of technologies that we look to fill that performance space that Arthur articulated. 
Mm -hmm. And certainly if you want to get the latest download on all the different persistent technologies, Dave Eggleston himself did a wonderful uh, presentation at the Flash Memory Summit. You can see the annual update on persistent memory that we have here. If you download the slides, you can link to that, or you can always find that in the SNEA Educational Library or on the Flash Memory Summit site. But I think that's a great way to be able to get an idea, an understanding of the technology for all of us uh, true geeks out there. You know, it's more than the memory though. Uh, you know, we've talked about some of the standards of the DIMMs and other things like that, but there's really a need for an entire ecosystem to evolve around this. It needs to be not only the hardware, but the platforms that support it, the standards that go around it, the software that runs it. Hey, Dave, I'll turn to you first. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, how you see the ecosystem developing for persistent memory and what are some of the key and important points for, that you're seeing? Yeah, and I think, thank you, Jim. And I think it takes a lot of different elements as articulated here. On the hardware side, let's talk about form factors first, because SNEA is very involved here in the standardization of what are called the EDSFF form factors. Uh, there's a separate SNEA committee that does that standardization. We're going to see these form factors come to market first in SSDs. They're shipping now. They're called E1.S SSDs. They kind of replace the M.2, which was a much smaller gumstick size, and it's a little bit larger. So that's one place you need form factors being done at SNEA. Then we talked about interfaces. Interfaces such as CXL, that has its own consortium that's been put together over the last year and a half, the Compute Express Link Consortium. It is a mouthful. And then we talked about NVDIM-P, which is done in the standardization body of JEDEC. So that gives us interface, that gives us form factor, but then we have to do some other things as well. And the software is an incredibly important piece. How do you put the support in so that applications can take advantage of persistence. Remember I talked about we're doing something new, bringing this persistence into this cache coherent network. Up until now, the software thinks of everything attached as just memory and it's all volatile memory. Well, you do have to manage persistent memory a little different. It has a slower speed, but then it also has this benefit of keeping its data after the power turns off. That sounds great to have that capability of persistence, but sometimes it's not great because the system might want to reboot to reset itself. It has to know that that memory is different than other volatile memory out there. So how do you put that package together so that the application can be aware of persistent memory? It's certainly been one of the challenges, even for some of the simpler devices like the NVDIM-N or the more complex devices that we see recently, the Optane DIMMs from Intel. And Intel itself has done a very good job of kind of sponsoring these capabilities and this development. At SNEA, that was done years ago in what was called the NVDIM P-TWIG, which is the NVM Programming Task Working Group, was to standardize that API for applications to program. So that's just one way that uh, I, a important company like Intel has fostered that change. Mm -hmm. Now, Arthur is, uh, you know, is a, as a person at Smart Technologies who's really looking up and, and waiting for this ecosystem to develop, what are the encouraging things that you're seeing out there uh, other than some of the things that Dave's already mentioned? Well, just to add a little bit to what Dave mentioned, I mean, it really comes down to the nuts and bolts and how to, how to put all these things together, the, the hardware, the, the BIOS and the systems to be able to recognize the new types of memory, persistent memory that are being plugged into these boards and make sure they work and interoperate correctly. So we've done a lot of work within SNEA, as you'll see in the next slide, uh, to make that happen. It's taken a number of years. All these companies that are listed here have contributed significantly in terms of their efforts to make sure that these uh, systems are up and running and they can operate um, securely and uh, have a lot of endurance in, you know, once they're, they reach with the end customers. So the, the mm -hmm. a lot of work overall together. Yeah. And it's great to see persistent memory really continuing to grow. I mean, even in the time that I've been involved with it in the last few years, seeing the standards really come out and seeing the industry working behind it and seeing shipping software uh, like Oracle and, and Microsoft and VMware uh, really starting to deliver on that promise. I think it's fantastic to be able to see the marketplace uh, continuing to develop. And I think uh, there's a lot of exciting things going on. 
And SNE is at the heart of advertising those exciting things. And uh, so uh, we run a special interest group uh, within the CMSI, uh, the Persistent Memory and NVDIM SIG. And Arthur, in fact, is the chair of that. So Arthur, why don't you talk a little bit about some of the things that the special interest group does, and then also give uh, people who are watching the video uh, an understanding of how they might join and then participate with us. So the Persistent Memory and NVDIM SIG has been around for a number of years. We've done a lot of work uh, in the areas of education, of uh, collaborating with uh, in industry players and helping to the, for this ecosystem that we discussed on the other slide come together. So that's taken quite a few years. And through SNEA, it's been a good forum for everybody to contribute. There's opportunities for individual companies to, to uh, add value and demonstrate uh, their products and services while contributing to this community effort in terms of educating the industry and uh, providing other uh, new value as the CXL and other interconnect standards emerge, the persistent memory and NVDIM SIG would be a good place for the any companies interested to participate with us. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a, really a lot that can go on that uh, really, again, as we highlight some of the new software and some of the new platforms coming on with persistent memory, as well as the adoption to the standards like CXL, I think you're going to see a lot more from the SIG moving forward. So let's get some quick closing thoughts. So Dave, any closing thoughts from you on the, on the persistent memory market and why people should be excited about it? I think it continues to grow and we see major corporations that have invested in it. You talked about some earlier. We've seen implementations from Oracle, Twitter, VMware, and the suppliers to them, you know, such as Intel that's supporting it and AMD as the process, some of the processor vendors supporting it. And then we have a whole ecosystem of companies, Smart being one of them, that's supplying the board level products as well. So the ecosystem continues to grow, encourage people to get involved. And Arthur, anything you'd like to say at that conclusion? Hi, Jimmy. I think the, the upcoming Persistent Memory Summit, we'll be hearing about how some of the form factors uh, on the uh, SSD side are being implemented and used for memory expansion and memory acceleration. It's very interesting what's happening in the industry today. All right. Well, for those of us, uh, for those of you viewing the video, uh, we certainly hope that you enjoy the Persistent Memory and Computational Storage Summit. Uh, we think it will be exciting, and we hope that this has been a great primer for you for persistent memory. Thanks, everyone, and have a good day.